every week, one of two remarkable ships plows her way northwards through the long rollers of the Bay of Biscay. Her cargo? Gas. Methane gas, frozen until it's liquid. A shipload of gas for the homes and industry of modern Britain, brought from the distant Sahara Desert. Between them, the two ships are capable of looking after a tenth of the nation's total gas needs. Once every six days, on a round-the-year schedule, one or other of these ships docks at Canvey Island on the Thames estuary. There she discharges her cargo into the special storage tanks. The whole process then becomes something like a vast refrigerator going into reverse. The temperature of the gas, which was frozen on the coast of North Africa, is now carefully raised until it reverts once more to its normal state. In doing so, it enlarges to about 600 times its liquid volume and is then fed into the national gas grid that now stretches across Britain. The pipelines of the grid link Canvey to Hitchin in Hertfordshire and to places as far west as Reading and as far north as Manchester and Leeds. At these various points, the local boards can use the methane to enrich gas produced by other methods and so increase the supply. The grid has been specially built to handle the gas from Africa. Most of the piping has been laid underground and the farmlands show not the slightest disturbance less than a year after the pipes were laid. There's been a remarkable revival in the gas industry in recent years. It's had a facelift, and the modern gas works looks vastly different. The old gas works on the edge of the town belched fire and brimstone. It wasn't elegant, and it made its presence felt. But steadily, the old installations are being replaced, and the demand for gas is nearly 25% greater than it was just four years ago. Gone are the old gas brackets and the ugly Victorian stoves. Now they're collector's pieces, and some of them can be found carefully catalogued in what are really industrial museums. The great mass of them went for scrap years ago. Today, the gas appliance industry is thriving on modern design. Roughly two out of every three households in Britain use gas for cooking. The makers turn out the cookers at a rate of nearly 750,000 a year. Gas fires sell more than a million a year five times as many as a few years ago. And more than 150,000 gas central heating units are being installed annually. Gas for the family and a big cooker for the canteen. One giant gas kitchen range in London is said to prepare a million meals a week. So the problem of producing more gas for modern Britain is now partly answered 1,500 sea miles away in the Sahara Desert. Here, an international group of companies has combined to exploit a find at Hassi Armel, 300 miles or more by road south of Algiers. The wellhead seemed really to be in the middle of nowhere, with the nearest oasis 40 miles away. This is a world that is empty, except for the wandering Bedouins and their flocks. But more than a mile down, below the scrub and the sand, the oil men struck the third largest natural gas field in the world. The operating base is run by a maintenance staff of 145. Algerians and Europeans look after the wells and the plant. Once built, these large units need a comparatively small staff to keep them going. The flares act as a safety valve. It's lonely, but the lads live well, while they watch to see the supply is maintained. They clear the gas of some of its unwanted contents. It then enters the main pipeline to the distant Mediterranean. Its own pressure takes it underground across the Sahara and the coastal foothills to the north. For all but the last few miles of its long journey, the pipe is two feet in diameter, very like a main water supply to some big city. Finally, it comes to the surface at Arzu, a small Mediterranean port near Iran. 
The liquefaction plant, which dominates the area, takes the gas from the pipeline, continues to purify it, and freezes it down to a temperature of minus 258 degrees Fahrenheit, by which time it is no longer gas, but liquid. It is then held in three large storage tanks until it can be shipped off to Europe. Three ships tie up regularly at Arzu, the two that work the shuttle service to Canvey Island, and a third that goes to Le Havre, where her cargo is piped into the gas mains of Paris. The loading process uses equipment specially designed to work so cold a cargo. It still freezes. The ships themselves have been developed from a liquid gas barge that was first built for the Mississippi River in the United States. The Gas Council in Britain was quick to see the vast potential value of imported liquid methane. So it went into partnership with the American pioneers. Larger ships were designed and the run from Algeria to Canvey is the result. The liquid methane tanker can carry 12,700 tons. It must keep the liquid gas at a temperature far, far below a point at which any form of life as we know it could be sustained. Not surprising that it costs nearly five million pounds to build, about twice as much as an oil tanker of the same size. It's equipped, of course, with safety devices, and its crew take it all as a matter of course. After loading up, which takes about a day, the methane ship, the Princess or the Progress, sets course back to England. There's nothing simple in the world of international oil and gas, and a tanker like this is no exception, for she's part of a project which is jointly British, American, and continental. She's British built and operated under the British flag. When her crew of 47 have completed their fire drill, they're still standing on a cargo involving half a dozen different interests. The trip home takes four days. It's the most unusual link in a chain that cost 54 million pounds to build. For the Arzu plant cost more than 30, the two tankers nearly 10, the Canvey Island terminal nearly four, and the new British gas grid another 10 million. The investment is worth it, for Britain spends more than 300 million pounds a year on gas. About half of it still comes from coal, most of the rest from oil, and a tenth of it already comes from the Sahara. Further supplies may come from Nigeria and also from Holland. And of course, the drilling crews and survey ships are busy in the North Sea. But even if a big gas field is found off Britain's east coast, she'll still need the methane ships from the south. So steadily does the demand increase. Yes, it's a remarkable story. How an idea first worked out on the old Mississippi River is now being used to keep the cold out and cook the meals in the middle of a British winter.